I feel like I need to. There we go. Hi. Hi. How are you, Andy? I'm good. I'm good. Oh, good. We'll we'll see who jumps on tonight, but I'm a little. I'm like five minutes behind schedule, but that's no biggie. I'm gonna take the blame on that since I yeah. sent you some cute pictures at the last minute. So please yeah. forgive me for that. <laughs> yeah, Thanks for so, in. Exactly, totally. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm live for the first time in, I would say almost a month or a little over a month. Um, I haven't gone live in about a month. I've been kind of hunkered down and I get like that. So I've been mm -hmm. in a, a month where I feel deep in work and I want to stay hidden. So <laughs> that's the way I go. I completely understand that. And I'm sure the world has been missing you, but yeah. we don't like you one bit. It's easy oh, to get, get in, in the groove of just doing what God is telling you to do. So exactly. glad you're, but we're glad you're back. I'm glad to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> so I am like, as people are jumping on, if you want to uh, tell me who you are, where you're from, we'd love to know. Um, and interact as you want, but, um, and any replay people who come on later, uh, we'd love to hear from you as well. So welcome to Creative Connections. Mm -hmm. And um, tonight I have a special guest, Holly Scurry. Mm -hmm. And Holly, I put Family Legacy on there, Holly. Uh, yes. Do you want to introduce yourself? Well, sure. You're so kind. First of all, Mindy, I'm like so humbled and honored even to be on this platform with you. I think the world of you and have just admired you since the day I met you. And I am just blown away by what the Lord has done with your talents. And it's just really, um, I mean, for me, well, I, I'll go on to that in a little bit. But yes, to introduce myself, I'm Holly Scurry and I um <laughs> have the blessing of getting um, and, and the privilege of getting to serve with a ministry called Family Legacy Missions International since the very, very beginning. Wow. Um, I graduated from Texas A&M and joined this tiny little ministry that was just an idea at the time and um, and have been part of it since, ever since. And so that was 18 years ago. Um, when we started, we had a heart to bless orphan children in Zambia um, because the statistics there were just off the charts and just really mind boggling. They had over a million children that had lost parents and for a, a country that, which was basically the same size state of Texas. So I'll tell you a lot about that um, throughout this broadcast, but basically what started as a one week day camp where we were passing out beanie babies um, and little old Navy t-shirts has now turned into a dynamic multifaceted ministry that is radically transforming thousands upon thousands of lives, both here in the States and Canada and across the globe, all the way over in Zambia. And so um, it's just such a joy to get to to be a part of that ministry. So I've been doing that, my goodness, for 18 years. And then I've helped co-found other ministries. I've, I lead a ministry here and um, I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I lead a ministry called Ascent. Uh, mentors I helped co-found a year ago and um, with just some of the girls that I mentored when they were in high school and now they're out of college and we basically take college graduates and uh, pair them on a one-on-one -on -one mentorship relationship with high school girls just to help them navigate, you know, the ups and downs, highs and lows of life in high school and point them towards Jesus and how to know him um, and make him known. And um, so that's been a joy and I get to serve on a lot of boards, another nonprofit I'm really passionate about called State Rafa and Israel and, <laughs> just a lot of things. I'm doing scripture memory cards these days that God led me to do. So God is, he's always, I like to create Mindy. I'm a lot like you in that way. I'm an entrepreneur, creator, visionary, um, with just a heart to make the Lord, um, his name known throughout the earth. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We'll get into <laughs> some of your other stuff too. Um, in a little bit, I'd love to, sh for, for Holly to share something new she's doing, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so thank you. Hi, Ellen. Ellen's from Cape Town, South Africa. Nice to, to have you on Ellen. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Um, Love that. Yeah. So let's kind of jump into, we're going to share um, these, these 
interviews I, I'm doing recently are connecting through creativity. And uh, I do artwork. And so I love to, how my art connects with other people. And I love to hear their stories and how God can move through connection. So we're going to um, share a little bit about um, my experience going to Zambia and being connected to Holly and family legacy and just a testimony about that. And then I would love to hear Holly share just some testimonies about uh, the kids there and whatever you want to share. So um, I'll Perfect. start with, yeah, hi, Ellen. God is so good. Yes, we honor and praise him. Amen. Um, yeah, so I, in 2000, it was 2018, um, I was texted, and I remember this very clearly, and I don't know, Holly, if I shared this with you, but um, we both know Heather, a friend mm -hmm. who who organized this whole thing for me to go there. But um, Heather texted me at 4.44 p.m. And I remember that. God speaks to me a lot through uh, numbers and confirmation. And uh, I remember my, my phone dinging, and I was actually driving, so it came up on my screen in my car, and it was 4.44. And I saw the number before her. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, it's 4.44. Oh, my God. Just that number, it like stuck out to me. And she just said, I, I, you know, can I give you a call? I have, um, I have something I want to ask if you would do to paint. So I talked to Heather and um, she shared with me a bit about um, Family Legacy and the new Hill Wellness Center. Yeah. So uh, we'll get into that. I want Holly to share the backstory of that. But, um, Anyway, this this part is really cool for me. And and I don't know if it can speak to people about how God often has divine connections and divine timing for people yeah. in their life. But I was given a prophetic word like it was it was like 2013. So it was like five years before that. And mm -hmm. in it, it talked about the um a guy prophesied over me about doing prophetic art, but in his word he said that God will use you um, in Africa at an orphanage. <clears throat> and you know, you get those words and you're like, yeah, you know, whatever. That's cool. Awesome. Like, but I just let it go. And and but I had it written down and it was so specific. And it was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um I did do way back when I was younger, I I did a bit of um mission work in in Mexico but nothing like Africa. So anyway, uh, I thought, oh my gosh. So when, when Heather started talking about uh, the project, the building project and to paint uh, murals on the wall, I was like, oh wow. And she said, it's in Africa. And right when she said that, I was like, you gotta be kidding. Like what? So, and even one other tidbit, and I have to share this cause this is how even crazier it was. About a week before that, um, connection with Heather, my husband and I were talking and he said to me, one of my bucket lists in my life is to go to Zambia. And his dad grew up in Zambia. So my husband's dad lived and grew up in Zambia. And Corey always had this, you know, longing to go to the, to the country where his dad grew up in. And then they immigrated over to Canada. So I was like, when when Heather said Africa, and then I'm like, where in Africa? And she said Zambia. I was just like, what? You got to be joking! Like, totally crazy. So that right there were just giant confirmations to me that this trip is something I need to go do. So anyway, that was my like backstory of those two things, and and my husband was able to come because it was quite a journey. And I was going to be there for, I think we were there like almost two weeks um, because I needed to paint these giant walls. So <laughs> it was going to take a little bit of work. Remember how much work that was? So it was unbelievable. Yeah, the work so, I was way. So, oh. I have to know. so here's Holly. Here's when I met Holly. Um, and you'll see those walls behind us are completely bare. <laughs> and 
we spent, it was 10 days, I believe, painting. Um, but it was just such a fun, fun time of a lot of work, but a lot of uh, connection and, you know, ministry and just meeting the children was just so amazing. Mm -hmm. So I, I would like you to share, Holly, kind of how the Wellness Center came about. Yeah. Okay. So to give you all some background, um, so Mindy, we, Heather, as she mentioned, is a dear friend of both of ours. And um, on our property there in Africa, so we've got, in a nutshell, we've got three main programs plus a fourth one that's really been quite remarkable lately. Um, but the programs that we have in Zambia are, um, the first one is Camp Life. And Camp Life is an incredible incredible um, high energy camp um, experience where we bring American families over to Zambia to become camp counselors with Zambian counselors as well to 10 little kids per group. And so every week um, at Camp Life, we'll have 100 Americans and Can Canadians and anyone who wants to come um, with uh, a thousand orphan and vulnerable children um, at this program. So it is remarkable. Uh, I like to call it Vacation Bible School on steroids. It is like the most fun, exciting um, experience. And, you know, many people ha have never gotten to go on a mission trip before, but they make Camp Life their first one. And it's just, it's, it's incredible. It unites your family in ways that money really can't buy. And I think right. over here on this side of the world, we, we get on our little hamster wheel of life, like always doing, going with the flow, just trying to go, go, go. And do more and be more and you know our families are disjointed and what camp life gives you the opportunity to do is just get on a plane and fly halfway across the world and push pause on all that busyness right mm -hmm. and sit on the ground with these 10 little boys or 10 little girls who don't care what your last name is they don't care what resume you have or what your title is or what position you hold they just want to know if you've left them and it's just there's such a beauty there in the simplicity of just loving them and them loving you because you're human, because you're on this earth and God made you in his image and he doesn't make mistakes and vice versa. And it, there's just a real purity there. And so I could go on and on and on and on and on about Camp Life, but that is Camp Life in a nutshell. Throughout the whole course of the summer, we'll have 7,000 kids nearly and over wow. almost 100 Americans that participate um, in that program. Yes, my little loves. Okay, so this is actually great because this leads me into our next point. So okay. from Camp Life, we um, actually have an opportunity to get these kids sponsored. And so what you're looking at is a picture of me um, at one of our 24 private Christian academies where we have almost 14,000 children who go to school every single day. Um, these kids in this picture at one time came to Camp Life and they met someone who cared about them, enough about them to just get on a plane and, and minister to them for a week. And then they got to come home and find sponsors for them. And so these kids' dreams basically have come true, uh, getting to know Jesus, first of all, and secondly, getting to go to school. That's every kid's little prayer request in Zambia is they want to go to school. They're hungry, number one, and number two, they want to go to school. And so we, um, starting back in 2007, decided to start a sponsorship program. And then a couple years after that, we decided, you know what? We can't partner with locals because there's no quality control here. We need to build our own schools. So we started with four. And wow. then it jumped to seven and then it jumped to 11. And now we have 24 private Christian academies. And y'all, they are beautiful schools. They're in the middle of um, the, the slum areas that these kids come from. And so these kids can just walk, you know, through their neighborhood, through their neighborhood um, to their school. And um, they get to have access to a private Christian education. It's kind of like you to put it in our terms, it would be like taking a child from South Dallas and putting them at a private Christian school like Trinity Christian or, you know, Prestonwood Christian Academy. So uh, amazing, totally changes the course of their lives. Yeah. Um, so we actually have children and um, it's forty eight dollars a month. And if anyone feels led to sponsor a child, it just, please, please, please <laughs> jump on that bandwagon. It will change their life forever. It is the best investment you can ever make. But um familylegacy.com just click sponsor a child but anyway so from there i'm getting to mindy's point okay but i have to i feel like i have to give you all Can a kind of like little picture to sure. put it in. yeah oh so this yeah. is where the kids come from yes exactly right. you mentioned like, they walk through their neighborhood and this is their neighborhood yeah right yeah oh yeah that's chienda we have a brand new school in chienda that's just a couple years old and it's gorgeous um and 
these little kids, they live in Chienda, right down, right around the corner yeah. from that beautiful two-story school. It's got over 30 classrooms, computer lab, library, beautiful library. Yeah. Um, it's incredible. So that is our Legacy Academy Child Sponsorship Program. We're very proud of it. And we've got over a thousand employees that work for the ministry full time. I mean, it is just really changing lives, y'all, um, transforming lives. But what I was going to say is um, some of those kids, like the children in the picture you just saw, their parents had actually both passed away. They had nowhere to stay with. They were raising themselves. So in Zambia, um, just to give you perspective, uh, just some quick stats for you to understand. Um, Zambia has 17.8 million people in their population. So almost 18 million people, half of the entire population are children. So the median age is 16.7. So there's 9 million children in the country. Wow. Okay. Out of those nine, I mean, yeah, that's unheard of. Like our median age is 37. Okay. Right. Their median age is 16. So wow. It just shows you uh -huh, like the, the disparity in, you know, in the age there, the death rate and everything. But um, out of the 9 million children, 20% of those kids have lost one or both of their parents. And 25% um, of all households in Zambia are led by children. Wow. So there are kids everywhere. 54% of the entire population lives below the poverty line. So there's vulnerable kids everywhere. There's orphan children. Um, you know, UNICEF, they've got, they define orphan all different ways. A single orphan has lost one parent, a double orphan has lost two parents, um, a serial orphan has lost both parents, and then they move in with their grandmother, their grandmother dies, so they've been orphaned multiple times over. Wow. They have also what they call a social orphan, where parents will just abandon their children, and, um, and so, you know, kids are just sent out to, from the village that, to the city to go figure out how to go to school and make a life for themselves and they abandon it or they'll just leave and go to another country. And that happens all the time, which leads me to my next point. So where Mindy was working with that gorgeous talent, um, God given talent of hers was at the tree of life children's village. So for children like the ones I just described, we, by God's grace, um, starting gosh, all the way back in 2006, it was birthed what, uh, the Tree of Life Children's Village. And what it is, is it's a 200 acre property development. We have 65 homes on the property and it actually started, the whole village actually started in memory of my little girl named Lahema, which I have Aww. my necklace on. Um, you can see it's like a tree of life. Yeah. yeah. And on the back of it, it has her name. It's probably too hard to read, but um, it has Lahema's name and it says John 9, 4, which is the scripture. Uh, where Jesus says, all of us must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us. So we all have individual tasks. Mm -hmm. So your task was to paint this medical center um, by the one who sent me, because there's little time left before the night falls, he says, and all work comes to an end. And, you know, I listen to that scripture and I think, huh, the night, the night, the night could be the night of a child's life. Right. The night could be the night of your life. It could be the life of, it could be the night of time when Jesus comes back. Yeah. Um, so all of these little kids. So right now, y'all, we have almost almost 700 kids. I, I, I think it's, we've, we just had some graduation, so don't quote me exactly. But and those kids uh, live there, right? They live full time yeah. in the 65 a, yeah, It started with the Hemis house. So that's our school on the property, which is beautiful. Okay. Um, and, but we've got 65 homes on the whole property. and. I sent you a picture of that, Mindy, at the last minute. I don't know if you have that picture, but it's okay if you can't find it. Um, but it is beautiful. I like to call it heaven on earth. I am totally convinced that when God looks down from heaven, there is like this just beaming um, light coming out from the children's village because it's his heart, y'all. He adores these children. These kids are at the core center of his heart, and he is looking to us to say, who will go for me? Who will stand in the gap and be my hands and be my feet? And take yeah. care of my little ones, he says, because they are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. They really, really are. And I think we forget that. And I, I know that, I mean, can you imagine being God and looking down across the whole earth mm -hmm. and there's all these little children that just want to know that they're loved, that just want to understand their identity and him and who they, where, where they came from. They came from him. And um, we get the joy of just getting to, 
go over there and be his mouthpiece. That's me. That's at Camp Life. So okay. fun. Yeah. So, so fun. Are these all the, these are the kids that come from villages to the camp yes. today, right? Exactly. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So that's at camp. So that's like our little sea of a thousand children that literally all day, every day, um, all summer long for the past 18 summers, I've been surrounded by a thousand orphan and vulnerable children. Wow. <laughs> Yeah. It's fun. like heaven. I'm telling, I'm telling you, it's just like, it's just as good as it gets. Nothing can be. So, so long story short, that is a snapshot of our ministry. And yes, we have advanced programs for the kids when they graduate to go on and excel beyond to trades, college, university, um, foundation year, all that kind of stuff. It's so great. But we, um, our mutual friend, Heather felt led to build a medical center on our tree of life children's village property. So on the property, we've got the homes, the sports fields, the um, the uh, pre-K through 12 school. We have we just started a farm that is just phenomenal and completely just changing so many lives over there, both physically and spiritually, because we're teaching the children how to farm God's way. But a number of years ago, God led us to build a medical center. And this was a long, really a dream of mine ever since Lahima passed away. So I mentioned little Lahima, she died of HIV and AIDS, which was so sad. Um, and in her memory, I built the first house and I always wanted to build a medical center and we just kind of needed to get our feet underneath us for a while and, and do the houses before we did a whole medical center. Cause there's so much involved in that. Um, at the time we didn't even have a medical director. And so, um, so anyway, sorry, I'm repositioning. This is kind of going over. Um, so, so Heather was a friend of mine and I went to her and I said, you know what, Heather? I know y'all want to build a house um, at the Tree of Life Children's Village because that's kind of where they were feeling led. I said, but right. we actually have a really big need for a medical center and we've got plans and we can actually do it now. We're at this point and she just felt like it was heaven sent. I mean, and then she began to pour out, pour out her heart to me and explain. And I'd known their family all these years and known that their oldest son had had this medical condition, but she just started to say, Holly, I think in the waiting while we're believing for our son's healing. Yeah. We need, we need to build that medical center in faith. And so they ended up giving them money wow. to build a medical center called the Hill wellness center, speaking out truth, Hill wellness center, their son Hill had Your gotten, son. yes, this is a beautiful picture. Um, and that's of course, Mindy's stunning uh, artistry there. <laughs> I mean, it's just perfect how you did it. Like, it's absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, but Hill was diagnosed with well, a condition that. Here's um, their family, right? Do what? There's there's the Washburn family, and Hill was in the middle there. So. Yep, he's in the middle, and he had gotten an autoimmune disorder after his eighth grade year. So, like, right at the beginning of his ninth grade year in high school, can you imagine? And all of his hair started falling out. And um, there was no rhyme or reason to it. And they took him to every doctor and no rhyme or reason. And um, I mean, they've spent years and years and years trying to track this down, follow it, solve it, pray through it, all of it. And but it was actually they had gotten a prophecy from a friend of theirs that said, oh, I think you're supposed to go on a mission trip. So this yeah. this whole story is so cool. So that's how they originally came to Africa was because of that prophetic word. So you were gonna talk about a prophetic word. They've gotten one a couple of years before, and this is the coolest thing. That's so Mindy, cool. when, well, I'll, sh I'll share this in a second, but when Hill first came to Zambia, so he was still in high school and he was just humiliated, right? Cause he had, he was a high school kid that had no hair and no eyebrows and no eyelashes. I mean, you know, a little bit. Right. Look like a cancer patient. And that's just humiliating for a high school kid. And so he kind of wore this hood over his head and um, sunglasses inside. And the, there was a little boy in the very front of his line. His name was Justin. And he had um, an infection all over his entire head. He was like six years old. And the, um, the doctor on our staff came up and said, Hey, this little one isn't going to make it if we don't get custody of him really quickly. And so, um, Hill just fell in love with that child that weekend. I just thought it was so mm. perfectly like God to put a little boy that was ashamed of his health condition of his head, you know, in the very front of Hill's line and Hill 
had the same problem to you. And this is till a couple years later, which is so sweet after he'd really kind of worked through some of those issues, but picture him being a couple years younger. And I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of that, but so oh my gosh, I'll find it. So sweet. And so one of the pictures that we have of you painting the Hill Wellness Center is of Justin, who did get to move in that year, oh, whose life was saved. So this is, this little guy is Justin. That's Justin. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. oh, okay, <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> yeah, this little boy, he's so cute. I got to show one more picture. Please do. Yes, that's Justin. <laughs> <laughs> He's precious. Oh. So precious and he's so happy and he's so presidential. He's a lot like Hill. Hill is very like he commands a, an audience and um, he's now very, very confident. And God has really turned his life around through this child, which, of course, we know that's who God is. Right. right. But um, anyway, I've talked and talked and talked, but it was just so amazing that God brought you, Mindy, a prophetic painter to our property that Heather had prophetically given gotten a word that they were supposed to come and, and going on a mission trip for her was like the last thing she's, she would have ever thought about like Africa, no way animals, mm -mm, not her thing, <laughs> but the Lord really prophetically gave them that word and they came. And then it's like beautiful to watch the Lord paint this tapestry, you know, or paint this um, canvas and create a tapestry of what his plans are. And so yeah. Anyway, we've never gotten so to have I, yeah, I came in at the very end of that building project to when you guys were going to decorate it and install it. And um, I remember at first the plans were kind of like, well, I've done a lot of painting before. We can do kind of like prints. And we did put prints in there. But um, then as we talked, Heather's like, could you potentially go there? That was before it was like, go there and paint on the walls. Okay, and okay. Then it was funny because it was like, I'm like, okay, that's, that's murals. And then I was thinking and I'm like, you know, she's like, have you done murals? <laughs> I'm like, and this is God, you guys. So all of you out there who have things from your past, God can prepare you without like, having like a huge history of how to do things. So I did one mural in high school. Oh <laughs> I painted in my high school, a mural on our wall. And I apparently it's still there all these years later. But oh um, I'm like, yeah, I've done one mural. <laughs> so I felt qualified because I did it once. <laughs> You're totally qualified. What, what's that line? God qualifies the called and or yeah. calls. Yeah, so he was like, like yeah. you were called. I'm like, I think I can do murals. <laughs> so, but here's the thing, you guys. And well, it's like the most beautiful, it is the most so, literally oh, the yeah. center of the entire Tree of Life Children's Village. The children love going to the Hill Wellness Center just to look at the walls. <laughs> they do. Yeah. So then I started, I'm like, okay, how much time do I have here? And I was like, I had like 10 days to get, at the time, four murals done, four rooms. And I, we added a fifth while I was there. <laughs> like totally insane. It was me saying, I'll do it. The but tight room, right? Yeah. It was, no, oh, it was the main, the tree in the front. The last was, one. Oh. We weren't going to do that, but it was like added last minute. But okay. anyway, so these were the walls. Like I had kind of no idea what I was getting into until I got there. And Thank God my husband was there because look at Corey. He's he painted all the we oh. thought the backdrops were going to be, you know, ready, but it yeah. it was like completely bare. So we're like, oh we let's get to work. And Corey was so awesome. He painted all the backdrops and those little boys would come in. It was just so cute. Yeah. Oh, and they wow. love to watch us work. And um, mm -hmm. anyway, so I spent days on and these were tall like tall walls. The ceilings were quite large. Like, I don't even know how big it was, but I just, tall. yeah, the they were, mm -hmm. it was not yeah. your normal, like nine foot ceiling. It was like a 12 or 13 foot <laughs> ceiling. So I spent 10 days on ladders. Like and our, my, my calf muscles behind were like so much pain. I have a motto in life, uh, Mindy. And it's, 
I say it all the time, only the best for the best. So yeah. they're the best. And I'm sorry we made you work extra yeah. hard. It is totally it really awesome. Awesome. So I did I did one, I, I just showed you guys the balloon room. And then we started in on a floral, like a garden room. And these little girls, this is so cute. So the, the kids were amazing. They came in every day to see what was going on, like to check in. Mm -hmm. And um, these little girls just, you could, I just was like, they want to paint so bad. Like mm -hmm. what kid doesn't want to paint when right. on the wall, right? <laughs> so these little girls, um, I gave paintbrushes to, and then they, they were like, yeah. So we, we let them paint a bit, which was super fun. And um here, let me find that there. Nice. So we painted that. And then, oh, this was my favorite room. And this was intense. I had this in my mind of doing bubbles. Because oh. we wanted this to be really fun for kids, right? Right. Kids were right. majority of the the clients, right? The patients. I mean. yeah. Um, and so I'm like, I'm gonna do this Incredible. giant, giant balloon or uh, bubble room. And uh, yeah, that was all that is. <laughs> yeah, it was intense. This was so crazy. And I and I painted with wall paint on this, you guys. So on concrete walls. So the drying time was like it would like sucked the paint into the wall. And so I normally blend on canvases to make it look kind of blended or whatever that backdrop. I I um this one. Like, wow. Doing that, it was like warp, warp speed to get it to kind of blend. But the, this was like my favorite room. It was so much fun. <laughs> I loved this room. Um, wow, so Mindy. That was that room. And then I did, what did we do? The kites? The kites. Yes, I want to see the kites. Oh, yeah. incredible. This was kind of halfway. And the colors weren't showing up well in that blue. So I did all the kites white before and then went over it with color. Wow. So oh, and this so is kind cute. of fun. You can see the medical beds in after, but mm -hmm. it just creates really neat um, kind of like imaginary rooms for the kids to come in. Look, when you look at that kite painting, it's like you feel like you can go into another realm, right? Like, look at that. I mean, well, it showed me that this is really, this was, this is kind of fun because I feel being in a whole nother dimension, which yes. is fun. I love to live in that world. <laughs> I know, right? Lord, get us to heaven. I know. I'm like, can I just paint in the clouds all day? Because that looks I totally cool. long for heaven. Oh, that's great. Right? Mm -hmm. We so, just got to bring as many people with us as possible. So I know. So we did those. And then uh, we were kind of, you know, they had a, they had a lot of amazing staff who were putting everything together. And uh, one of the ideas they had for that main foyer, right mm -hmm. when you walked in with the Hill Wellness, yes. uh, it kind of like they hummed and hawed and contemplated some stuff because we were going to put up some mirror, mirrored something or other. That was and, the whole thing is we were planning to put up like this pretty mirrored tree that we had right. found. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, ah, I wonder if we should, because the kids will pick it off. I remember everyone was, you know, contemplating this might not be good because the kids will probably pick all of those leaves off the wall. <laughs> right. And I'm sitting here listening kind of in the background painting and I'm like, oh, no, what are they going to do? And then I remember I'm like, well if you want, I can paint the tree. <laughs> and I'm like, after like four walls, I was almost being done. And then I'm like, you know you what? You not tired or anything, were you? <laughs> yeah, I was pretty exhausted. But I'm so kidding. anyway, so then I'm like, well, let's just go for it. So I then yeah. took on the tree in the main room. And to be honest, that was, that was my favorite, like at the end of the day, I think. Um, wow. I, we, we did kind of a Zambian style tree and chose all these birds from Zambia. So I looked up different birds from the country and it ended up making that. Which and is? Those tree, and they had tree funny. chairs. I mean, you guys really thought out well, all the fun mm -hmm. details. Um, and this was one thing I added in the tree um, mm -hmm. because it, it represented something for Heather actually. Heather, it was so passionate about the Lord being our anchor of hope. Yeah. 
And yeah. she really hung on to, you know, Hebrews, that scripture in Hebrews, that he is our anchor for our souls. Yeah. And um, and that was just her sign that Hill is going to be healed. Hill is going to be healed yeah, one day. And I just thought that was so yeah. powerful, Mindy, because that literally is in the center of the tree, yeah. in the center of the main front room when you come in. And it's like, yeah. of course, of course. It's, yeah, an anchor of hope. And really, that was what was so fun about um, the project is just seeing how color and fun imagery can brighten a kid. Like just their eyes would just be like, oh, you know, you would just kind of escape into this fun world for a minute, you know? Literally, Mindy, they've never experienced anything like that before. They've never seen anything like that. And I'm telling you right now, and since the very first day we opened, the kids make up excuses to go to the Hill Wellness Center because they want to be there. They want to <laughs> be in that place. And prior to that, you know, medical treatment, I would say had a little bit of a taboo to it. It was like, Ooh, what are the doctors going to do? You know, they weren't used to it all the way for children that haven't had access to, you know, high quality medical care. And so it really helped remove, I think, any fear that the kids might have had um, in going to the medical center, the Hill Wellness Center. And so, no, your, your drawings have just brought the entire, I, I would say brought the whole children's village just to a whole nother level. Um, it is the center of the tree of life and it's a place of healing and yeah. hope. And that's always been, you know, our heartbeat for this, this place is that it would be a, a place of hope and healing for the children of that nation. And um, it's just like, makes me really get, <laughs> it really does. It just blesses my heart so much because those children they deserve all of that and a hundred times more. And it's just so, it's such a blessing to be able to bring hope into their lives after they've lived such traumatic and, um, you know, they've lived through such difficult circumstances and it just, yeah. I feel like what you've done, Mindy, is you've put ointment on oh. God's part, really. Um <clears throat> gave God a gift. And he says in Proverbs, <laughs> you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord and he will surely repay you. So just get ready for, I mean, come on, I want to be in that game. Like you can't ever be on the debtor end of God. <laughs> He'll outgive you every time. So you just um, have so many treasures in heaven, I know, and, and down here on earth, of course. But I yeah, I have to show this picture because this no, is. Please do. Yes. <laughs> this. Um, so you, uh, you guys had a opening ceremony uh, for the wellness center, and mm -hmm. these kids did this a most amazing, you know, dance and singing and blessing of the opening, really, and it was just incredible. I think I've recorded, I have a recording of it, but man, it was, it was so much fun. They had a good, yeah. So that was really fun, wasn't it? Their little voices. Well, they, they sing in their little British English accents. And then when they say Jesus, you're like, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, and here's one more. Sorry, we have so many pictures. Yes, that's us. After. Holly. Holly Not behind I. the white walls. <laughs> oh, this is when we were really getting going. I was like, yes. And so, Mindy, that is Justin. That's the little boy that was in Hill's group that literally got rescued because Hill came on that mission trip. And then here he is a couple years later at the Hill Wellness Center where he gets medical treatment. Like it, it's just remarkable. Cool. I'm just amazed at God's precision and the links that he goes to for his children. Think yeah. about it. It's like, wow, he goes to such great links for us and for those children. So, <laughs> yeah. So that was, you know, bit of story on that. And I know like Corey had such an impactful time, my husband, um, cause his dad grew up in Zambia and, um, man, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was a fulfilling time for him personally to stand mm -hmm. with oil there yeah. and, um, you know, really just, um, he, he needed to have some healing and forgiveness himself. Yeah. from his childhood. So 
it was a full circle kind of feeling that whole time we were there of so many layers, it seemed, you know, to give back to the land and that, you know, he could come back and the whole thing was just totally amazing. Like we definitely, th this trip is probably one of the top things we've ever done um, together. So wow. we'll never forget the trip there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's, here's Corey. He, he went on, um, we went into their, um, when we went to visit the schools and stuff and, and share the gospel in the, in the town there. So mm -hmm. he took a group of boys um, and that was really cool for him to go do. So yeah. It changes your life. I'm, I mean, it really, yeah, it, it was changes fun. your life for the rest of your life because you don't ever look at life the same anymore. You look at, you look at life through a different lens that God gives you and suddenly your problems don't seem so big, even though they are, but yeah, God just kind of gives you a new perspective, you know? And I, and I think too, just like for him to bring Corey there, you know, right after y'all had talked about him wanting to go to Africa and specifically Zambia to see where his dad grew up. I mean, wow. Like, yeah. Uh. Yeah, and you was, know what I loved so much too was the theme that year was God sees me. Was and it, it was like, much? yeah, Corey, God sees you. Yeah. He sees you. I know you're coming to tell the kids that, but God sees you too. And so I, I, there's so much power there. So much. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was fun. So that was that trip and it was incredible and giving hope to kids through art is so fun. We did this little thing too, where we painted the kids' hands and they created kind of a fun abstract painting, mm. which was super fun. Um, but just, just, and then we sold those with, to all the mission trip participants, we did an auction and raised yeah. I don't know how many thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, oh, that's Chipo. Yes. That's her name. Yep, that's that's Chipo. Yes. Yeah. She was the more her face now. Yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> came every day. Precious she Chipo. loved, she just wanted to stay there and paint. She's probably oh, the artist. Yeah. <laughs> It was so awesome. <laughs> yeah, we had fun. She was awesome. Ellen, mm -hmm. thank you guys. Yeah, hi, Tanya. Um, it is powerful, Ellen, for sure. That's great. Yeah, so Holly, why don't you talk to us quickly about your new venture you've been working on? Yes. Uh, before we, we get off, we have about 15 minutes. So I want to hear your new, what you're up to. Too. You're so kind. Okay. Well, I have to say, you know what? The Lord has been so sweet to me in my life specifically. I've given my entire adult life um, to Family Legacy to build this ministry from the ground up. And it really, you know, I've been so blessed to get to envision it and dream it up and and build it and build it and build it and so and so and so. And, and for 18 years, that's all I've ever put my heart and mind to, but two years ago, I started walking through some really deep trials two, three years ago, and they kind of wrapped up last year. It's kind of interesting. The trials kind of all came to a close and all of a sudden, like near the end of 2020, God started taking me back to the beginning wow. and like where it all started. And he just really started putting different things on my heart that have always been there, but I've never really brought out. And one of those things, um, one was the the mentorship ministry that I mentioned, and that had been going really for the past year. And it's kind of, we, we launched it like officially in August um, of last year. But, uh, but the other thing, which is, and that is tremendously powerful, just mentoring, I think through the power of relationships. And that's what I see as the common thread really like, yeah. through family legacy and, um, and w you know, the power of getting to connect the children with the Americans or, or whoever, you know, Canadians, of course, always, um, on a one-on-one -on -one relationship, but really in the process, we're connecting them to God's heart 
We're connecting the kids to God's heart. We're connecting the Americans to God's heart through each other, through that powerful relationship. And um, so really so much of my life stems around the power of relationships and um, the main relationship that all of us need to, to work on is our relationship with the Lord, because that's who we, that's where we came from. He Mm -hmm. made us, we were in him before we were ever a little teeny tiny baby in our mother's wombs. Um, So uh, one of the things that God really like started me off in was scripture memory when I was a kid. And when I first came to Christ and I have a whole story of a whole story is just an incredible testimony. But when I first came to Christ, I started memorizing scripture and I basically stopped listening to what the world was saying about me. And I started listening to what God was saying about me. And I didn't know Prior to that, I didn't know who I was. I was a really ashamed little child. My dad had left our family when I was six and he had tons of money and didn't leave us with a penny practically. And so we grew up extraordinarily poor and he grew up or he lived his life wow. with all his fancy life. And we were just, we went to bed hungry most nights. And of course you can see why I now minister to children that are hungry children and um, who are child headed households. And so we had a really, really hard childhood. I had to work most of my childhood from the time I was 10 all the way up. Um, But when I was 14, I ended up getting a scholarship to go to a Christian camp called Young Life. And um, again, you're like seeing the the, the thread here, right? Like I helped start camp for all these kids that didn't know Jesus. And, but God came and became my father through that Christian camp. I came to understand God is my father. I'm not a fatherless child. I have a daddy. His name is God and I'm his daughter. So I'm royalty in his kingdom. So I'm a a princess. And basically, like I said, I stopped listening to what the world was saying about me and started listening to who God said I was and everything began to change. And so um, this year, and there's so many other ways that God has done this that I could go off on tangents on, but um, he led me. I'm still not married. I'm turning 40 in August, y'all. And I'm just, just still begging God for a miracle, trusting him to bring this miracle husband to my life. I don't know where he is, but God knows. And that is awesome. Um, and truly, he's my he is my heavenly husband. He's my true husband, my bridegroom. I'm just waiting on the earthly one. But um, all these dateless Friday nights that I've had in, in 2020, I decided to um, find my sc- favorite scripture memory cards, scripture verses, um, and put them together because I really wanted to empower women, uh, specifically the ones in this mentorship group that I mentioned, but also, you know, I know so many people and everyone was like, oh, Holly, well, I would love, I'd love to memorize scripture. Let's do that. You know? And so I began to put these scripture memory verses together and gosh, can you, can you see them? And so on Friday nights, I had a friend, Becca, who's a graphic artist and, um, she helped design these cards and we went, we poured through the scriptures and found them. And it's hard to see them on this, but I wanted to make, well, this is a box that is on your website. Yes. Yes. So it's um, my website is called heightswithholly.com. And basically my little tagline is living in light of heaven. And the Lord has just been revealing to me the glories of heaven. Yes. That's the inside. When you open the box, that's what it looks like. And then it's a really pretty pearlized paper because I like to communicate with every single aspect, like our royalty and how special we are. Um, I really believe I really, really believe that it's not just pretty, it's, it's pretty for a purpose and um, to communicate value and worth. And so anyway, when you open them up, then this is what the box looks like uh, or what the little, the cards look like. So there's 40 scripture cards and a lot of these cards are, um, they're kind of atypical scriptures like, um, behold, I am the maker of breath. God says, Uh, The God of all the flesh of the entire world is anything too hard for me. Jeremiah 32, 27. I mean, people don't really know that verse, but how powerful of a verse is that? And so I just wanted to take these high school girls, these mentors, and then all my friends, people I know to a higher level. I love it. Like, look at what I have behind me. (laughs) Yes. Yes. It's on that. It's on my easel. But this was the painting the Lord showed me to do for this year. And it's all about being a son and daughter and coming up to your heavenly position and kind of that ruling and reigning with Christ. 
Yeah. In our authority. Right. And it hurts your identity, right? So. Well, I think that's like the number one way that the enemy works. You know, I mean, think about it. Like we come straight from heaven. We come from the father to the earth when we're conceived. And the enemy tries to trick us and make us think and make us believe all these lies. And and if we can only walk in the fullness of who we are and the authority that we have as his royal daughter or his royal son, think about the atmospheres that will shift. Think about the miracles that will come. And it just took the Lord showing me that this little kid who really thought I was a nobody and look at what God did with my life. I built a children's village through his grace, by his grace. It is the Holy spirit. It was all him, but like, it's really his heart, you know, and just now these 14,000 kids go to school every day and there's 65 homes. And I mean, it's, 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 you can never even add it all up. And the praise is all yeah belongs to the father and the son and the holy spirit all belongs to them 100 percent. it's like i just feel so privileged that he chose me to get to do this you know i'm like wow lord <laughs> well, i was gonna say i mean it just is such a cool testimony holly of your life and mm-hmm. how god can take someone from their past and completely use you as a vessel to carry out you know giving hope to other children when that's something you struggled with. I mean, that's just so beautiful. And that's kind of what happened to Corey in Zambia. Because Corey wow. was actually orphaned by his own father when wow. he came to Canada from Zambia. And so he got to go back to Zambia and forgive his father and pour into orphans. And so it was just like, I'm just loving these testimonies of this full circle that God can use in someone's life, right? It's how he does it, like blows me away. And like in the process, he uses Corey's wife, you know, to paint these beautiful walls for these children that have like lost, practically lost all hope. And then they get rescued. I mean, the 700 or so kids that live there or right in that number, I mean, there's, think about it. I mean, Oh, well, 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 over a million children that have lost their parents and 700 were chosen to live That's there by God amazing. himself. And so it's just like, mm. it's so powerful. It is amazing. It. it is amazing. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Um, yeah, I wanted to show. So if anyone is, if you want to get these scripture cards, has, they'd be a beautiful gift wouldn't they? Oh my goodness. These make literally make the best gifts. And what I wanted to show everyone too was, um, hundred percent of the proceeds go directly um, to advance the gospel of Jesus Christ in Zambia. It's just, it's just amazing. So I, there's nothing in this for me except for just to shovel more treasures into heaven. I'm just like trying to get heavenly treasures here and help, help and bless <laughs> well, you. I, love, I, love your, I, I take this from your website. So this is Heights yeah. Holly. And I love that, that even that name, Holly, how'd you come up with that? Well, truly, it's a theme that the Lord has been weaving into my life lately. Um, yeah. Mindy, God, I've gotten a lot of prophetic words that God is taking me higher yeah. over and over and over from different people. That's and awesome. I don't know what it looks like, but I keep getting that word. And he honestly has been revealing so much about heaven to me. And I could go into that whole story, but um, well, it's more than one story. It, it's unbelievable, but amazing and y'all i cannot wait we have such a glorious inheritance that is awaiting us in heaven and i mean goodness all i want to do is store up treasures from down here to up there that's it all i want to do with my life i just want to be a vessel and i want to know him and make him known and um and so so really it's been a theme that he's been taking me through personally you know i think in the christian life Mindy, the way up is down. And I went through a lot of trials as a child. And then I went through another little round of trials not too long um, after I started Family Legacy, which almost did me in Um, health wise. I got really, really, really sick for about six years. And then the latest round of trials just (laughs) <laughs> my sister got the most aggressive form of cancer. My little brother's baby died. My younger sister got MS. My mom got Alzheimer's. Uh, another tragedy happened that just doesn't need to be spoken about. And then my, I had been waiting um, 
and waiting and waiting to get married. And finally I met this man and turned out he was, he was not my, my true husband and our wedding uh, got called off three weeks before our wedding at the age of 36. And so that was like the last straw. And yeah, if you were to ask me, you know, I would have said any one of those trials would have been enough for 10 year time period, period, you know, yeah, you any one of those trials, they were all stacked into the same like 18 month time frame. And yeah. it was through that, through that like attack of everything, everything that was important to me was attacked literally. Wow. Um, but in the utter, like the depths of my pain, the Lord started to sh take me higher. Yep. And he started to take me to yeah. just and show me another realm or re start revealing to me another realm. And so, I don't know. I'm so thankful I am where I am today. I like have a deeper peace in my heart than I've ever had ever. Um, I know the Lord knows where my husband is. I'm not worried about it. I'm really not. I have a deeper peace than I had when I was 35 and I'm almost 40. And so I just, you know, so the higher theme. So it's like, it really should be called Heights with him. But I have this cute little intern that was like, Holly, people love you, my friend, <laughs> and they want to follow you and you're going to point them all to him. And I'm like, all right, well, it's Heights with Holly through him. All right. So. That's good. Yeah. Ellen asked, how can we purchase them? So I have the website here, Ellen, heightswithholly.com. And it's, they're in there under shop, right? Yes. Yes. And they're just, they're one for $28 or um, four for a hundred. So yeah, I would love to love to send those to y'all. Thank you for wanting to get some. They they do make the perfect gift. They're the kind of thing you could stick them in your gift closet. And then when you're running late to a party, you just grab one. And and it's a meaningful gift because it blesses you, the giver, because you're in, you're helping put the word of God in someone else's heart. It blesses them, blesses God, because he wants us to connect with him. And this, you know, I'll say this last thing. I know it's we need to go, but um, I think sometimes like, you know, people are like, Holly, how do you hear God? Or Mindy, I'm sure you hear that all the time. Like, how do you hear from God? Like what? Yeah. I mean, if you, God speaks through his word. Yes. Period. But if you don't know his word, then I mean, it's, it's hard. It, it can be hard to hear him. And so my heart with this is, is to get people to memorize his word, put it in their hearts so they know it, know it, know it. So that when you're going throughout your day and the enemy starts speaking lies to you, you can instantly like take that thought captive and replace it with the truth that you memorized, That's you know? Right. And so That's it's good. really, it's really neat. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. It starts in the word, getting to know God's character yeah, and know how he is and how he moves through scripture and then you hear his voice for yourself through your your own life and mm -hmm. to me it all starts in prayer i mean just carve out time to sit with him period every day um mm -hmm. but i i've just learned how to just move in my day with him i'm yeah. sure you do that too just yeah. being aware of jesus's presence all day long every day mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Yes, it, it definitely. I feel like we are definitely moving into a time where God is calling us higher. Actually, I'm working. I'll have to show you when I'm done, Holly. You'll love it. But it is a painting and I heard him say, come higher. And so it's all about, you know, he he ripped the veil that we have access to the throne room and we have access to him already mm -hmm. here on Earth. And so. That's kind of the theme he's speaking to a lot of people, I think, right now, mm -hmm. is really knowing who you are in yeah. Christ and coming up to your royal identity. Because yeah. we we live that here and now. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of where this that painting was birthed from. But I really, every year, I'm like, what's the word? And the word I heard this year was authority. And the Lord said, you know, come, it's that coming up higher. So I just love that. I love that you used heights. Mm -hmm. um, we need to see his perspective. Yeah. And it's higher than ours. <laughs> it's a lot higher. Awesome. It's so good. It's so good. So I'm just going to live in those clouds. Amen. I like that picture. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Oh, well, thank you, Holly. It was so awesome having you on. And oh my goodness, such a joy. I, I've always wanted to share the Zambia experience, but 
you always need someone who's there. And what better person than you who <laughs> been there from the very beginning? It's amazing. So mm -hmm. I love it. it. I can't believe God chose me to get to do this. It's been the, the joy of my life and everything in my life leading up to that point was to prepare me to do that work. And and so, and then God just been preparing me for even more. I, I'm like, oh my gosh, but it's just remarkable who he is and what he's doing. And if any of y'all ever feel led to join us in Zambia, we yeah. will 100% take you with us. We would love for you to sponsor a child. Again, it's $48 a month and yeah. just completely changes the trajectory of their entire lives, but literally. And, and the generations that follow after them because we break the cycle of poverty, right? When you take one child out of poverty, it doesn't just help that one child. It helps their family. It helps who they marry one day and their own children. They'll be able to afford to send their own children to school. So you, it's a multi-generational impact um, mm -hmm. through just, you know, an investment into a life. And when we invest into God's people, whew, his word. Okay. That is an epiphany. I'm going to tie this up with this. You know, only two things that last forever, y'all are the word of God yeah. and the souls of men, period. So spend your life investing the word of God into the souls and the hearts and the lives of people. And you'll win every time. That's and that's what we do at Family Legacy. And that's what I'm doing here at Heights of Holly. And that's what I want to just do with my life, you know? So anyway, it's an honor to join y'all in it and to partner with people like you, Mindy, that I feel like are just heaven sent. And I'm just so blessed to get to be your friend. And um, to know you. And I know that there's many more adventures yet to come, which are going to be good. Yeah. So Yeah, it's so good. Well, thank you. Thanks everyone for watching who was on and anyone who replays, we, we love it and we love you. Thank you, Ellen. You're a blessing. Um, yeah. So we're, we, we did another week, Holly. I did another Yay! week. I just, <laughs> came out of my hole. So, awesome. so much per like I know myself well enough now that there's purpose sometimes it's okay to go into secret place and just like for me I've been in a month of just deep seeking the Lord and so yeah. ah it's so good like it's refreshing so mm -hmm. just yeah. on the floor in prayer and weep yeah. I've been crying I've been in a crying season again so it's a good well, cry but it clearly rubbed off on me because I don't remember the last time I cried this much, like literally. Um, I cry so. almost every day. <laughs> That's good. Okay. But it's a good cry. It's it's a cry because I feel God's weight, like His presence is so strong. So tears are cleansing. They are. They're amazing, and God's preparing. I really just feel so strongly He's preparing the bride, you guys. Like, mm -hmm. and He's saying, "Come know me." Like seek me and so i just i i just sit with him every day and cry i'm like i want to know you better so okay. it's good but thank you holly it's it's fun to see you and hopefully you stay warm in dallas <laughs> yes well we'll work on that so pray for us up down yeah. here it's okay cold. It's not nearly as cold yeah. as you have it there, so. <laughs> no we're way cold in Canada, but we get it <laughs> Okay. Thank you guys. We will see you next week. Thank you. Okay. Bye y'all. Bye.